if you make a sale, you actually close an agreement between you and your customer. It can be quite elaborating. Think about when you would buy a house or something in real estate. It can be a quite extensive process. But it can also be quite simple. Think about buying a piece of fruit in the, in the market. But if you make a sale, it always contains uh, information about three elements. First of all, uh, it contains information about your product or your service. You also have an agreement on your value proposition, what you want to offer, and about the price. No matter if it's an elaborated sale or a really short one, you always agree on these, these three. Depending uh, on your sale, what you sell and how you sell it, you can extend your contract or agreement with some other topics. For example, you can include a delivery time, uh, give some more information about uh, if a follow-up is needed, or uh, make people sign for specific terms or conditions. Keep in mind that not all sales have a written contract. Think about the piece of fruit that you bought on the market. You do not always have a receipt for it. But if you buy, for example, the house, you will need to go through some contracts. Depending on what you sell, who you sell to and how you sell, different laws are applicable. Think about the law concerning consumers, trade, online selling, international selling, privacy and so on. So before you start your sales process, look up a little bit more information about these laws. Most companies use terms and conditions to protect themselves, but also their customers. It can also help to clarify your way of working. Whether you are obligated to use terms and conditions or to make them visible for your customers depends on what you sell and how you sell it. You can think about the box that you have to tick if you buy something on a webshop. 